Welcome back to Math with Miss B and today we are learning fractions. A fraction is part of a whole number. Fractions are referred to as rational numbers. There are three different types of fractions, proper, improper, and mixed. A proper and improper fraction have a numerator and a denominator which are written like this. You have A over B. A fraction bar separates the numerator from the denominator. It is the symbol for division. Mixed number fractions have a whole number located to the left of a numerator and a denominator and it can be written like this, x, a over b. Proper fractions should always be written in their lowest or simplest form. So if you have 2 over 4, your answer should be 1 over 2. If you have 5 over 25, your final answer should be 1 over 5. And if you have 14 over 36, your final answer should be 7 over 18. How do we do this? Well, factors are numbers that can be multiplied together to form another number. For example, the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. Where 2 times 2 is equal to 4 and 1 times 4 is equal to 4. Factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10, where 2 times 5 is equal to 10, and 1 times 10 is equal to 10. To simplify proper fractions, the greatest common factor of both numbers should be determined. Let's try the fraction below. A, 4 over 10. Factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. Factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. The common factors of 4 and 10 are 1 and 2. The greatest common factor of 4 and 10 is 2. Hence, 4 over 10 written to its lowest form would be 4 divided by 2 divided by 10 divided by 2 to give you 2 over 5. Let's try two more. Simplify 6 over 10 and 9 over 15. You may pause this video to try this, or if you still don't understand, follow along. So let's simplify 6 over 10. Factors of 6 are equal to 1, 2, 3, and 6. Factors of 10 are equal to 1, 2, 5, and 10. The common factors between both numbers are 1 and 2. The greatest common factor between both of the common factors is 2. Hence, you would divide 6 by 2 and you divide 10 by 2 to give you 3 over 5. Let's simplify 9 by 15. Factors of 9 are 1, 3, and 9, and factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. The common factors are 1 and 3. The greatest common factor is 3. So we divide 9 by 3 and 15 by 3 to give you 3 fifths. Let's add fractions. Now, if the denominators of the fractions being added are the same number, then you simply add the numerators and keep the number. So you would say 1 over 5 plus 3 over 5 is 1 plus 3 over 5, and that will give you 4 fifths. Here are some more that you can try by yourself. Pause the video. So you have A, 3 tenths plus 6 tenths. What is that? B, 5 sixteenths plus 2 sixteenths. What is that? C, 4 thirteenths plus 8 thirteenths. What is that? If you got 9 over 10 for the first answer, good job. If you got 7 sixteenths, Good job. We got 12 thirteens. Awesome. If the denominators of the fractions being added are different, then a multiple common to all numbers involved in the addition has to be determined first. 
So you can't just say 1 over 5 plus 1 over 4 is equal to 1 is equal to 2 over 9. You have to find a common denominator. And that you can do by multiplying both numbers together without thinking too hard. So you would say 5 times 4. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So you would say 1 times 4. And then over here, you would say 4 times 5. And because it multiply the bottom by 5, you have to multiply the top by 5. And you will end up with 4 plus 5 over 20. And that will be equal to 9 over 20. It's not bad. It's not too hard. Here's another example. We have 6 over 11 plus 3 over 22. You could look at the 11 and see you can change it to look like 22 easily. How would you do that? You multiply by 2. And whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So you end up with 6 times 2 over 11 times 2 plus 3 over 22. That will give you 12 over 22 plus 3 over 22. And you end up with 15 over 22. Let's try this one as well. You have 1 over 6 plus 3 over 9. Look at the denominators. They do not look the same. So you can multiply each by the other. So you would say 6 times 9 and therefore 1 times 9. And then if you say 9 times 6, then you have to say 3 times 6. You end up with 9 over 54 plus 8 over 54. Your common denominator is now 54. So you simply add 9 and 18, which gives you 27. And so you would see that 27 hmm, looks like it's double 54. So you would say 27 into 27 goes once, and 27 into 54 goes twice. So that gives us a half. Subtracting fractions is pretty much the same. Once the denominators are the same, you can simply subtract the numerator. So you would say 4 minus 1 over 5 gives you 3 fifths. If the numerators are different, you do the same thing. You look for a common denominator. We see we have 5 and 6 here. We can multiply both of these together. So we would say 5 times 6. And therefore 2 times 6 and then we say 6 times 5 and therefore 1 times 5 and we'll end up with 12 minus 5 over 30 and in the end you end up with 7 over 30 Improper fractions are fractions with numerators that are larger than the denominators below are some examples you have 55 divided by 6 60 divided by 7 and 24 divided by 5. So if you look at it, you could think of an ice cream effect. We have a large amount of ice cream on top and a small cone at the bottom. Mixed fractions can be converted from improper fractions. So you see 55 over 6, it can be converted to 9 and 1 6. 60 divided by 70 can, can be converted to 8 and 4 7. And 24 divided by 5 can be converted to 4 and 4 fifths. So 9 is a whole number here, and your little fraction is 1 sixth. 8 is a whole number here, and then your little fraction is 4 sevenths. And 4 is a whole number here, and 4 fifths is your um, little fraction. How do we do this? Here we go. So if you have 55 divided by 6, you would say, well, 6 can go into 55 9 whole times because 9 times 6 will give you 54, correct? Right. And so 54 subtracted from 55 will leave 1, which you would place over the 6, and that will give you 9 and 1 over 6. So it's like this. So you would say if you want to convert to what it was before, you say 6 times 9 is 54, plus 1 is 55, so you end up with 55 over 6. So you're just multiplying the denominator by the whole number, then you add in it, add in whatever your product is, to the numerator to get back your improper fraction. Okay? Alright. 
Now fractions can also be multiplied. So if you have 3 over 5 times 4 over 6, you simply multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So you end up with 3 times 4 divided by 5 by 6. You end up with 12 over 30 and you can see that that can go down because both numbers are even. So you can start with 2. 2 into 12 is six goes 6 times and 2 into 30 goes 15 times. And it can go down further because <coughs> you can see that 3 can go into 6 and 3 can go into 15 as well. So you'll be left with 2 over 5. And those two numbers are prime numbers, so we can't go any further. Let's try 3 over 7 times 3 over 4. So you multiply 3 by 3, because those are the numerators, and you locate your denominators, which is 7 and 4, and you multiply them. You end up with 9 over 28. Nothing can be done from there. If you want to divide a fraction by another fraction, all you have to do is upturn or flip the fraction that's in the denominator and then multiply it by what fraction there is in the numerator. So you have 3 over 5 times 6 over 4. Then you multiply 3 by 6 and 5 by 4. You end up with 18 over 20. And then you look at it and you see that 18 and 20 are both even numbers. So we can put 2 into 18, which is 9, and 2 into 20, which leaves 10. So you end up with 9 tenths. Same thing here, 2 sevenths over 1 14. You just flip 1 over 14. And you have 2 over 7 times 14 over 1. And so you multiply the numerators together, 2 and 14. And you multiply the denominator 7 and 1, and you end up with 28 over 7. 7 can go into 28 four times. Or you can see that you will put 7 into 14 twice. 7 into 7 goes into itself, and you end up with 4 over 1. Pretty much the same. Thanks for watching. Math with Miss B. See you around for our next episode.